it's rather humbling knowing that you're walking into something where you're gonna be made fun of, but <laughs> I'm used to it. Hello everyone, my name is Lisa, and today I'm going to react to Curtis Connors' video entitled A Deep Dive Into Disney Adults. I myself am a Disney adult, but I do not come here representing anyone else. I am not an ambassador of Disney adults. I have never seen a Curtis Connor video before. Let's watch the video. Okay, here we go. All right, Disney fans, cover your Mickey Mouse ears. I'm about to get controversial. Not really. I, that's, that's not what this video is going to be. I just kind of wanted to make that Mickey Mouse ears joke. So we all know Disney, right? The multi-billion dollar entertainment company started by a man named Walt Disney in the 1920s as responsible for some of the most popular iconic movies of all time. They own Pixar and Marvel Studios and Lucasfilm and 21st Century Fox and pretty much everything else. That Disney. He forgot to mention ABC and ESPN. <laughs> Disney films actually played a huge role in my childhood, and I'm sure they played a huge role in yours as well. I had an extensive VHS collection of all the old animated Disney movies, and I also went to Disney World in Florida when I was three years old, and I don't remember a second of it. I don't remember anything of it at all, because I was three years old. And this could play a huge role in maybe why he does not understand Disney adults. You've never even been to a Disney theme park as an adult? I'll admit it, okay? Disney knows how to make a good movie. Have you seen Minutemen? It's a goddamn masterpiece, okay? <laughs> that film should be projected on a wall in the Louvre. All right, I Louvre it. And since people hold these Disney movies so close to their hearts, some people really go all out with their admiration for uh, the Walt Disney Company well into their adulthood. And according to Urban Dictionary, a Disney adult is a millennial adult. <laughs> he said a millennial adult. I'm more like a bicentennial adult. <laughs> Millennial adult, with or without kids, that can't stop talking about Disney, including the movies and the parks. Even if they do have kids, they're still way more obsessed with it than their kids ever would be. Yes, I am more into it than my kids are. They probably engage in casual Disney bounding, which we'll talk about later, and visit the theme parks at least once a year. They're obsessed with everything Disney and probably have a Mickey Mouse bumper sticker <laughs> and or tattoo. Okay, I'm definitely guilty with the Disney tattoos, but I do not have a Disney bumper sticker, but when I do see them, I get excited and know that those are my people. <laughs> One of the most terrifyingly intense people you'll ever encounter. Okay. Now that's a problem with Urban Dictionary. No one can just give a definition, you know? They always have to like throw their own opinion in there at the end. Could you imagine if like Webster's Dictionary did that? <laughs> you look up the definition of peanut and it says, the oval seed of a South American plant. Widely roasted and salted and eaten as a snack. I don't like them. I'm allergic. <laughs> but you can get the general public's opinion based on that definition alone. People just think Disney adults are weird and cringy. And a few years ago, I for sure went and made a video just, you know, roasting these people, goofing on them. Because, you know, silly adult, Disney for kids. But dude, I, I'm 27, <laughs> you know, I'm an adult. I feel like instead of just making fun of something I don't understand, it's better for me to just try to understand it and then make fun of it. Disclaimer, if you are a Disney adult, please don't get mad at me. Fair warning, I might take the piss out of it a little bit in this video because I still want this to be a little funny. Today, seriously, I just wanna learn. I just wanna see what, what all the fuss is about, okay? So without further ado, let's see what's, what's up. So it's a little tough to find the actual origin of the term Disney adult, but I mean, pretty obvious as adults. What else do you call adults obsessed with Disney, right? Don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. Losers, I'm kidding. <laughs> Another term for adults who are obsessed with Disney is Disnerds. That is thrown around quite a bit, and it's actually more of like a, a term of endearment rather than an insult. <laughs> Obviously, Disney movies aren't just for kids. I know that. Don't look up Disney adult films, though. That's... Probably a bad idea. Or maybe it's a good idea. <laughs> Who knows? Most Disney movies like actually include jokes that like only adults will understand, you know? And I feel like Disney movies are just good, except for Cars 2, which was great. Disney knows how to tell a good story and they really know how to tackle these emotional and complex issues and ideas. Even when there aren't any humans in the actual movie, their stories are always very human and we can all relate to them, which is genius because it appeals to kids because it's silly, you know, goofy, it's bright, it's it's nice to look at, but it also appeals to the adults who are the ones that are gonna be spending the money on movie tickets and streaming service subscriptions and t-shirts and action figures and lightsabers and cruise ship vacations and theme park tickets and just fucking everything else that Disney sells. Walt Disney himself did say that what they create is for adults because adults are the ones with the money. Well, your film is principally designed for children, 
Well, no, you have to appeal to the adult or, uh, well, the, the adults have the money. The children don't have any money. But there was nothing childish in your intent. No, we, we, sort, of, uh, we sort of designed the films to appeal to ourselves. When it comes to Disney parks, I'm sure the parents are down to go too, right? Because it's like, yeah, sure, my kids get to go play on the rides. I liked the movies as well. And also they have beer there. So I'll get a little buzz. And then maybe I'll get a little buzz. Or more like a big buzz. Dude, I get why people poke fun at this stuff. I understand. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I've never, you know, thought this was a silly thing to do. But honestly, man, looking at it now, whatever floats your boat or whatever touches your butt. Like when I see photos and videos of Disney adults, like at Disney, I don't think I've ever achieved that level of happiness, right? What's that like? What, what is that like? It's true. There is like a next level of happiness with Disney adults at Disneyland. Here's a picture of my husband and <laughs> I. They're way happier than I will ever be. And it's not hurting anybody. Or is it? There is a bunch of criticisms towards Disney adults. So I figured we'd go over the main like three that I think people have against them and see if they're, they're warranted. Number one, devoting your life to a corporation. I actually never thought of it that way, devoting my life to a corporation. So uh, that's, that's an interesting spin on it. People out there who think it's a little odd to devote so much of your life and identity to one of the biggest corporations in the world. And some could go as far as, you know, saying the very concept of Disney adults could be pulled like right out of a dystopian like sci-fi novel. And honestly, I can see where they're coming from a little bit. There's something almost Orwellian about a group of people buying everything related to a corporation. The same could be said about like anyone who's a fan of anything. And just think about like, um, like sports. Like sports people get crazy. Seeing like the characters getting engaged at the company's theme park and sort of forming a, a symbiotic relationship with a business. Orwellian is a word, I had to Google to make sure. But again, I'm trying to be as open-minded as I can. This isn't my cup of tea, but if it makes someone happy, who am I to say it's bad, right? And that's true, it totally, it's so harmless. I just think people just like to knock other people down and it makes them feel better about themselves. and. We're just an easy bunch to pick on for sure. If there was a Legend of Zelda theme park by my house, I'd go every single day, okay? So I get it. Criticism number two, Disney's problematic past and present and future probably. So when you're a corporation as big as Disney, you're gonna get caught up in a few scandals. I think it's inevitable. You don't become one of the biggest companies in the world without a complete lack of business. business. Ethics. ethics. Let's go over just a few controversies that Disney has had. They've used countless offensive stereotypes and imagery in their movies over the years. A total of 29 animals died either on the way to Disney's Animal Kingdom or while they were there. Pixar's John Lasseter was accused several times of sexual harassment over the course of more than a decade. A four-year-old who died of leukemia was a huge Spider-Man fan and his father wanted to put Spider-Man on his dead son's headstone, but Disney refused, stating that its denial would help Preserve the innocence and magic of its characters. Uh. Okay, that part about the kid's headstone is, is really awful, but you really can't, you, you can't blame the whole Disney Corporation for that. That's really like their lawyer's moves. I mean, that's their job is to protect their licenses. But that was, a, that was told, that was a wrong move on Disney's part. They should have totally let Spider-Man be on that tombstone. I mean, Disney adults don't agree with everything that Disney does, that's for sure. You know, even all their, their history of racism, uh, very blatant racism, they are really trying to make good on that and really change everything moving forward and apologize for their past. If you go on Disney Plus right now, there's a number of movies and shows where you will see that they put a disclaimer before you watch it. So I do believe that Disney Company definitely has a greater good. The animal park with animals dying, I don't know about that either, but that sucks. That sucks. And yeah, of course, that's not something I want to promote. And oh yeah, Disney tried to trademark the Day of the Dead, Dio de los Muertos, the, the holiday. They tried trademarking that because Pixar was working on a movie that featured the holiday and they wanted to sell Day of the Dead themed merchandise. Disney tried to trademark a fucking holiday. Hey, I know you've been celebrating Day of the Dead for like thousands of years and it's really important like personally and culturally, but how much? Aww. 
Can I have? Can I have it? I want to make a T-shirt. Okay, I didn't know that either. That's awful. That is totally not acceptable. What the? F what the hell were they thinking with that? <sighs> I think it's time we go a little deeper. <music> familiar with the iceberg format. It's like basic level stuff, like surface level stuff at the top, right? More extreme it gets. Fucking everybody's doing kickflips at the bottom. It's mm, fucking extreme. So we'll start at the top, you know, very basic <laughs> Disney adult stuff. And then we'll go all the way to the bottom and we'll see how much we can take. The first one I put, uh, watch Disney movies growing up and watches the occasional Pixar film. I think I would put myself in this category because I, you know, I, I like the Disney movies and I watch the occasional new Pixar film. I've also seen every single MCU movie and Marvel's owned by Disney. So I guess I'm a fucking Disney adult in that sense. Dang, comic book nerds. Sorry. You're Disney adults, unless you like DC. <laughs> Maybe that stands for Disney comics, who knows? Okay, so next level deeper. We got sees every single Disney movie, goes to the park every few years, has a pair of Mickey Mouse ears, but doesn't wear them. Uh, one level deeper, now we're starting to get into like muddy waters, I guess you could say. For this next level, I put goes to the park as much as possible, has at least one Disney themed tattoo, might even have a Disney Instagram account. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're getting we're getting into my level here. <laughs> I'd say this is the cutoff of like casual Disney fan and like full on Disney adult. And we're only at the halfway point. So that's <laughs> I should fucking tell you something right there. And I feel like this level of the iceberg makes up the majority. They either have the fucking Disney castle outline, Tinkerbell or the, the Mickey Mouse logo tattoo. For sure, one of those. I mean, if you got these tattoos, no shade or anything. Well, th actually, no, there might be shading on the tattoo, but no tea. How about that? Unless you got the teapot tattoo from Beauty and the Beast. No offense. I'm in absolutely zero position to be judging anybody's tattoos. But yeah, maybe this person also has a Disney themed Instagram account, like a side one maybe, or maybe just post Disney themed stuff on their on their main Instagram account. Photos in front of the castle, all that <laughs> shit. All right, now we're in the bottom half. This is where it starts to get a little spicy. And I'll be spending more time on these levels going forward because there's just more I have to cover within them. So this next level, I labeled it Die Hard Disney Fan cosplays in their spare time and Disney bounds at the parks has a cat named Simba for sure. So this next level is where I start to feel a little odd about Disney adults. All the other stuff, it's fine, whatever. But these next two levels are just very weird. To me, Disney wedding and honeymoon spends every anniversary at the park, but doesn't have any kids. Again, people can do whatever they want with their money and they can do whatever the hell they want on their wedding day. Personally, I wouldn't want to get married in the same place some little brat pissed his fucking sweatpants <laughs> and puked up a bunch of cotton candy only hours earlier. Okay, <laughs> let me just say, all the thousands of people who get married stay in like Las Vegas every year, I'm pretty sure that someone had just pissed their pants and puked near them too, only they weren't children. And also, dude, a Disney honeymoon seems like a nightmare to me. Honeymoon's supposed to be like nice and relaxing and... And straight up, they're just a, it's just a sex holiday, right? That's what honeymoons are. A place you go and you, you, you bone, right? But I don't think there's anything that makes you want to have sex less than being surrounded by a bunch of screaming, crying children all day. <laughs> That's what's kind of funny about the theme park experience. And he obviously doesn't know because he hasn't been there since he was three. But the parks nowadays are not full of screaming, crying children at all. Like, honestly, it is mostly... <laughs> Disney adults. That's not even the worst of it. There is one final level to this Disney adult iceberg. This is the deepest it goes to my knowledge. And uh, to me, this is the weirdest thing a Disney adult can do. Completely consumed by Disney. They live on Disney property. They go to the park every single day. They live to serve their merciless God, Mickey Mouse. You know what? I think we've taken a pretty good look at all the, the different levels of Disney adults. But this is just from my perspective, you know, an outsider looking in. You know, if I'm going to truly understand Disney adults, I need to talk to one face to face. So let's go do that. Come on. Come on. The audience, give it up for Isaac. Give it up. Wow. For the people at home who, don't, who aren't familiar uh, with you or what you do, do you want to give like a brief uh, description of what of what you're all about, I suppose? Sure. So over the last five years or so, I've been making videos about Disney. I started off making videos about Star Wars and slowly over time, I realized there was a big opportunity. There wasn't a lot of people talking about Disney feature animation and Pixar. What is it about 
Disney uh, in particular that kind of keeps you know making you come back? The thing about Disney for me is that it was something that I always grew up with, and I've kind of grown to appreciate it more as I've gotten older. What's one like common misconception that people have towards Disney adults that you would uh, want to see uh, people change their mind about? I think the thing that I would want people to be able to take away about Disney adults is just the idea that like appreciating the art that's come out of Disney, whether it be the theme parks or the animated movies or the other properties like Marvel or Star Wars, is just that it's passion that people have just like any other. I mean, even the idea of going to a sports game and getting the jersey and getting excited about what you're totally. about to see right. and maybe even having season passes, it feels very in mm -hmm. line with someone who wears the ears or collects pins or does something like that and wants to go to the theme parks because they live near them or wants to go because it's a place that means a lot to them in a similar way that people get excited about other things that they care about. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a great point. People literally start riots in the street when their sports team loses. So. <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's ever been a riot started because of like Snow White. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think that's ever happened. No. All right. Thanks again, Isaac. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Isaac did great. Well, what did we learn today? I think we learned Disney adults are, are people just like you and me. Who knows why people like the things that they like? Maybe someone's childhood was garbage. So the childlike and carefree environment that Disney portrays is really comforting and makes people feel feeling that they didn't get to feel when they were a kid, you know? So if that helps them cope with how shitty life can be, I'm all for it, man. Life can fucking suck sometimes. I've also seen a lot of comments in response to people criticizing Disney adults, saying that Disney parks can be a place of comfort and solace for people like on the spectrum. I couldn't find any like studies or articles about that, but I've seen a lot of comments about that from people on the spectrum. So it's not nice to assume stuff unless you live in Golden Oak, then yeah, I'll, I'm gonna assume stuff. Classy Disney. There's videos and photos going around on the internet recently of people crying uh, when Disneyland reopened finally after a year of being closed. And obviously it was just people making fun of them being like, wait, they, they gotta grow up. What's wrong with these people, man? Why are they crying? Bunch of losers if you ask me. And like, I don't know, man. I feel like these are trying times. You know, these are special circumstances, right? We've all been inside for the past year. People have like lost loved ones. They've lost their fucking jobs. I'd cry too if I was allowed to go to a theme park. Oh my God, that seems like a dream. Yeah, and speaking of like lo losing jobs, those p crying people could be cast members, you know, that are finally getting their job back. And that can be life-changing, obviously. It's emotional. In conclusion... Disney adults, they're fine. Just leave them alone unless they live in Golden Oak. Then I guess still leave them alone because it's a gated community you're not allowed to go in. You guys, I'm surprised. I'm surprised, as you can probably tell with my reaction. I think he did a great job. I think he did Disney adults justice. I mean, he had to throw in some jokes and some raz in there to spice things up a little bit. I really thought he was spot on. He made some good points and I really enjoyed it. So good job, Curtis Connor. You should really go to Disneyland soon. You never know, maybe you'll become a Disney adult yourself.